I was in boot camp in 1945, uh, July. Yeah, I was being trained for being in the Navy. Well, everybody's got to spend a week in a chow hall. Well, that was my week in a chow hall, and I worked in a scullery. That's where you wash the trays and the silverware and everything, clean everything up. Well, when that's over with, you walk out the back door of the scullery. Now, I can remember this day that both sides of the sidewalk had stacks of newspapers from Milwaukee and Chicago and probably some other cities and big headlines about atomic bomb dropped on Japan and you know that message given um, in various versions as headlines, big headlines. And I thought well gee I hope that bomb works good and the war ends because I wanted to go home. I didn't want to be in the service at all anyway. So I had the strange, uh, unusual question when I was drafted. I, along with the guys I was drafted with, we were asked, we, they said, you're going to be in the Army or the Navy. You can have your choice. And I thought, well, the Navy seems more... I'd rather be on a ship than uh, marching in the mud. So. I chose the Navy, and they came in. Those of us who chose the Navy were given a little interview. And uh, when when I went in for my little interview, this uh, looked like he was a first class petty officer. Nice big looking guy, had a white uniform and stripes on his shoulders, and just probably as high as a. Uh, petty officer you should get. He says to me, why do you want to be in the Navy? Well, I was 18. I hadn't had time to even think about this question, you know. And I said, well, I think it'd be nicer to be in the Navy. And he says, nicer? You know, like you thought I was nuts. What kind of an answer is that? Is it nice? You would be nice in the Navy? <laughs> I, so I said, well, I just think I'd rather be in the Navy than the Army. So he said, okay, go ahead. Well, I was being trained for what they call the amphibious forces, and I didn't know what that meant at the time. What that meant was those you guys, you guys that are going to be in the amphibious forces, you're going to be the guys I found out later that are going to be attacking Japan. Just like the guys that attacked Normandy, you know, in the war against Germany. Well, I didn't know that at the time. You know, we didn't know about an atom bomb either. I saw those newspapers and that's, I found out later then, of course, that uh, Hiroshima was bombed, killed about 70,000 civilians because able-bodied men were all off to war and then a few days later they dropped another bomb on Nagasaki. So that was another 70,000 civilians, uh, Japanese civilians killed. A really terrible thing. I mean, I, so I have kind of mixed emotions about that bomb in Japan because it killed all those civilians but it it saved me from having to be in that attacking force because we were told that the American estimate was that uh, there would be 500,000 casualties when we attacked Japan, you know, uh, on the sea. Well, I could very well have been one of those, so uh, the, that's what I have mixed emotions about. I, I, Certainly didn't want to get, you know, killed going to attack. But I wouldn't have had any choice if it wouldn't have been for the atom bomb. Einstein thought that uh, the atom bomb was going to be so heavy and no airplane could carry it. So he thought a ship would have to carry it into a harbor and then they could explode it and it would uh, blast. It would sink any ships in the harbor and blow up all the buildings around it. 
Well, as it turned out, we had just come out with a big new bomber. They called it a Super Flying Fortress. I think it was not out very long by then. Well, this was a big aircraft, big four-engine propeller aircraft. And uh, it was able to carry the weight of an atomic bomb. Called the, they called it the Enola Gay because they wanted it to have a very unusual name that uh, would stick with it, you know, and be characteristic of that day. Well, okay, that, like I say, it was really bad for the Japanese civilians got killed, but it saved me. I almost had to go into the Korean War because they said if you weren't in the service for a year, you could be drafted back in the Korea. I went to my draft board and the guy says, don't worry about it, you know, and you, you won't go. I said, I about 11 months in, and he says, oh, don't worry about it. Okay, so I didn't worry about it. I went home and the Korean War went on, but I wasn't in it, so. Anyway, that's how I, I found out, I heard about the atom bomb, it was just outside that scullery where I was working in boot camp. And I got, I got out of there about 11 months after that. They had to leave the guys out uh, that were in the longest first, of course. That was the right thing to do. So, well, I just had to tell you about that. Uh, that was my uh, first finding out about the atom bomb and have those mixed emotions about it. So I'm glad I didn't have to go on and attack those islands around Japan. Sound like that was that was a terrible deal. We had to be lucky to live through that. Five hundred thousand casualties. Ooh, I could have easily have been one of those. Okay, well, that's it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time and uh, try to be happy.